So in this video, I'm going to be going over our endomembrane system packet, um, and our, so like our organ out packet, right? So on the first page, you have to match the numbers to the statement, the numbers to the statements, right? So number two, or the first one says the rough endoplasmic reticulum has a series of folds dotted with ribosomes. So here we clearly see there's a number of folds going on there, and then we see the dotted with ribosomes. So these dark dots are going to be the ribosomes. The second statement says the nucleus has two membranes that make up its nuclear envelope. The outside of the membrane is continuous with the rough endoplasmic reticulum membrane. Here we have our nucleus, number one. So number one, we see we have, if I can, our nucleus, we have membrane one right here and membrane two continuous with the endoplasmic reticulum. The third statement, vesicles travel from the, e, the rough ER to the Golgi apparatus carrying proteins to be modified and sorted. That is going to be number five. So we see this vesicle is starting to bud off of the, e, the rough ER here forms and it is going to our Golgi apparatus. Next, the smooth endoplasmic reticulum does not have ribosomes on the outside. The smooth ER's membrane is continuous with the rough ER's membrane. So number four is going to be our smooth ER. We see it does not have our dotted ribosomes around the edges, and it is continuous with our rough ER here. Um, next, vesicles traveling from the smooth ER can carry lipids and carbohydrates to the cell membrane. We see here three vesicles coming right off the smooth ER going directly to the membrane. Um, secretory vesicles travel from the Golgi to the cell membrane and release the proteins that need to be secreted. That is going to be number 12. So we see this vesicle here it's coming off of our Golgi apparatus, traveling through the cell and eventually merging with our cell membrane and releasing what it needs to release, so exocytosis. Um, vesicles, nope, sorry. Yeah, vesicles travel along the Golgi sacs from the trans phase to the cis phase, recycling membrane and lipids to keep each Golgi sac the size it needs to be. So it's going to be number seven. So you can tell it's number seven because remember our trans phase is going to be closest to our cell membrane. Our cis phase is going to be closest to the ER. Um, vesicles travel along the Golgi sacs from the cis phase to the trans phase as proteins are sorted and modified. That is going to be eight. We can see that it's starting here at our cis phase, moving from each fold until it gets to our trans phase. The Golgi apparatus is made of several distinct stacks that are not connected. That's going to be six. So that is just um, describing this whole apparatus, the whole Golgi apparatus. After lysosome enzymes break down food in the secondary lysosome, usable material is released into the cytoplasm and waste travels back to the membrane to be released. That is going to be 11. So here we can see 11. It is forming a vesicle to get the waste out of our membrane. Lysosomes, lysosome enzymes in a vesicle bud off from the Golgi's transphase to form the primary lysosome and later travel to fuse with the food vacuole to form the secondary lysosome. That is going to be number nine. So nine, we see here a vesicle is coming off of the Golgi. It then fuses with a vesicle coming in and forms a secondary vesicle, one that's a little bit larger than what it started out as. And finally, a food vacuole or phagosome forms when food is pulled into the cell, mem cell from the cell membrane. That is going to be number 10. So this is going to be a, a form of phagocytosis or endocytosis. Um, we have food being grabbed into a vesicle coming into the cell and that will fuse with our lysosome. So this is the endomembrane system. What you should remember for the test is going to be the order that the protein goes in. So nucleus, ribosome, rough ER, vesicle, Golgi apparatus, vesicle, membrane. That is what you should know. Next, we are going to be looking at these pictures and answering these questions. I apologize, some of the questions, um, this is, this is backwards, there we go. So some of the questions, it says refer to model one, cell nine. I forgot to tell you guys that cell nine is going to be our model one. So studying the cells in model two, which cell is not missing any cells compared to model one. So we have our model here. And if we're looking at it, 
cell nine um, isn't missing any cells because that is what we are using as our model one. Our next question says, look carefully at cells one or carefully at cell two. Um, what kind of organelle is missing? So if we're looking over here at cell two and we're comparing it to cell nine, we can see that our mitochondria right here are missing. It's very helpful that they're in the same spot in each picture, but we can tell that there's no mitochondria there. Next question says, describe why cell two would not function normally. So the reason that cell two would not be able to function normally is that they are missing the mitochondria. Mitochondria are responsible for creating energy in, in the cell. Without the organelle of the mitochondria, the cell would have no energy and would not be able to function. Next question says, which two cells will have difficulty containing and getting rid of waste within the cell? So the first one um, is going to be cell three, right? Cell three is missing the cell membrane in total. So it's not gonna be able to contain waste at all. Everything is going to go just everywhere. Um, cell five is going to be the next one because it is missing our lysosomes. Remember lysosomes are the organelle that are um, responsible for breaking down a waste. So if we don't have lysosomes, we won't be able to break anything down. Um, next question, cell one is missing an, one organelle. List as many reasons as possible why cell one will not survive. I have a plethora of reasons there. Um, you could have different answers as well. So cell one is clearly missing the nucleus. So the, um, without a nucleus, the cell has no DNA. No genetic information, it can't reproduce. Um, we won't have any protein production and there will be no growth. Um, question 15 says cell four and cell seven will not be able to synthesize a major biological molecule. What molecule is this? And this is proteins. So the reason cell four and cell seven will not be able to synthesize proteins is because they are missing they're little dotted ribosomes right here. So we don't have any ribosomes in cell seven or cell four. On the last page, we're looking at a little bit of cellular respiration and photosynthesis. Um, so 26A says, in what organelle does cellular respiration occur? And that happens in the mitochondria. Do plant and animal cells have this structure? Yes, it is important that both plants and animals have mitochondria in order to create ATP. In what organelle does photosynthesis occur? Chloroplast, do plant and animal cells have this structure? No, only plants have chloroplast because they need to create their own source of glucose. Um, animals will take in their glucose from other organisms that they eat. Using the equations above, explain the relationship between mitochondria and chloroplast. So I wrote, the products of one are the reactants of the other. Photosynthesis produces glucose and oxygen from water and or from H2O and CO2. And both cellular respiration produces energy, CO2, and H2O from glucose and O2. So if we just look up here, we have C6H12O6, C6H12O6. Product reactant, 6O2, 6O2 product reactant and the same here. So one, the products of one is the reactant of the other. Plants have both mitochondria and chloroplasts. Can they, produ they can produce their own glucose to fuel cellular respiration. Animal cells on the other hand only have mitochondria. If an animal eats only meat, what would be its source of glucose? So it would get the glucose that the animal that it ate broke down. So a wolf eats a rabbit if it only eats meat the rabbit still eats plants. And so the rabbit has glucose in it from the plants that it eats. So they would still get glucose that way. Where in the human body would you find cells with a large number of mitochondria? Um, those would be muscle cells. So you find a lot of mitochondria in muscle cells because they need constant energy in order to always move around and um, carry out those movements. If you have any questions on this packet, um, let me know and I will be happy to help you out.